dear friends, from the title, you already know that today's video is going to be a story time of a Tanzanian lady by the name of Marsha, 31 years of age, who found love on online dating apps, but that time she was 28 years, <laughs> with an American guy. And this lady, guys, is the same lady that I promised you in the video I shared of Loveness's story that she shared with Loveness about dating apps, and Loveness found the one, because <laughs> she was also in the dating apps looking for the one. She was at that moment chatting with someone, so we're gonna know who was that someone. <laughs> like I have always said that every love story is different, so as today's love story. It's very different, very unique. You're gonna learn a lot and enjoy at the same time because it has got a lot of Afro <laughs> cinema. <laughs> You will laugh so, so much. You gotta hear the goodies. <laughs> Cause there are some ladies who are like, Bella, we wanna hear the goodies part. <laughs> but let's be serious. You are going to also get to know the dating apps that Marsha used or tried before she found the one. And you will know where she found the one. You try out, try your luck. <laughs> and you can find someone just like Marsha. Plus, you guys at on online dating apps searching for love, interested in interracial dating, this love story is gonna shine your eyes, will help you so, so much. Because I know sometimes you can be dating someone on online dating apps, you find yourself in a situation and you're like, what can I do now? So that is when these love stories or a love story like this helps you out. When you find yourself in a similar situation that Masha went through, you'll be like, oh yeah, I had this story in Bella's channel. So yes, guys, that is why I am here for you to help you out, guys, okay? So without wasting much of your time, because I talk too much, <laughs> let us jump into our today's love story. So friends, I can jump and be like, Masha tried online dating apps, then found the one. No guys, we have to know why Masha joined online dating apps. What was her love relationship experience in the past like? <laughs> we need to know so that you can get close to Masha, so that we can understand very well this beautiful love story. Let us start from the beginning before she joined online dating apps. So dear friends, like I said, Masha is a Tanzanian lady, 31 years of age as we are talking right now, but when we talk of tribe, her mother is Chaga, just like me, <laughs> and her father is Haya. Masha's family is established in Arusha, Tanzania. If you're Tanzanian, then you know Arusha. <laughs> so dear friends, Masha tells us when she was little, used to be like, when I grow up, my husband will be a white man. And at that time, when she was little, used to be slim and good, but kept on growing and her body started changing. She started gaining weight and became an average woman. So there is this thing in Tanzania, or I can say in most African countries, most people think that white men cannot marry a woman who is plus size or who is an average woman. No, they marry only slim women. I've also got some DMs on my Instagram, ladies asking me, Bella, I am plus size, can I get married to a white man? Can a white man marry a plus size woman? But I always make them understand that it is not all about you being slim or you being average or you being a plus size, not at all guys. It is all about love, about you as a woman, your heart, because a serious man cannot just go and start looking for a slim woman and that slim woman maybe in the head is empty. <laughs> no, no guys, your weight does not matter at all, but sadly guys, that's how some people Think. So this entered into Marsha's mind and she was like, no, no white man will ever marry me because I am an average girl. So guys, due to that, Marsha was very, very sure she won't attract any white man 
who will marry her though it is her dream pushed her to start dating black men tanzanian men so friends marsha's first relationship was with a tanzanian guy it worked for a while for some time and then things started being bad because Marsha knew what she wanted. Yes, she was very young. She didn't have enough experience when it comes to a relationship, but knew what she wanted in life and tells us in the end, she couldn't take it anymore. That guy was a liar. This is the problem with most african men i cannot say only tanzanian men no most african men they will be with you in a relationship and as a woman you will create castles in the air <laughs> like i've always said think that this guy is gonna marry you but deep inside this guy's heart he knows that he is not going to marry you because he doesn't know what the future will bring. And cause I don't know, maybe they don't want to hurt us. <laughs> they tend not to be transparent. They leave you in a guessing room. So that is where Marsha found herself in a guessing room. And she didn't like that. Better be transparent with me. I know where our relationship stands. If you want to have fun with me, tell me I am here to have fun. If you're here for a serious relationship, yes, be honest and say, I am here with you. I want to date you because I want a serious relationship with you. But Marsha did not get that from that Tanzanian guy. So life continued and everyone around Masha, including her sisters, could tell her, Masha, you reason like a white person. You talk like a white person. You behave like a white person. Even they gave her a nickname, Masha the white girl. <laughs> In Tanzania, they could tell her, Unamambo ya kizungu. <laughs> so this all reminded her, her childhood dream of getting married to a white man because she tells us she believed a white man will date you for serious reasons white men are so transparent when it comes to a relationship a white guy will tell you i am dating you because i want this relationship to lead to marriage and she really liked that very very much so friends Masha kept on thinking about her childhood dream of getting married to a white man but didn't know where to find that white man didn't know anything about dating apps or places where to find a white man but she heard it in her heart that i am really ready i really want to get married to a white man if i am to get married so tells us her father taught Marsha and the sister on how to use a computer. So sometimes they could sit on a computer with her sister and start scavenging things. <laughs> so one time they were on the computer scavenging and discovered about online chats. It wasn't the dating apps, no, just online chats. And at that time, that is when they started chatting with people from all over the world. They could chat with someone who is in China or is in America or Korea and be like, how is your country? What is the time now in your country? <laughs> like painful, nothing serious, nothing like, you know, a relationship. They were just online chats. <laughs> they used to have such kind of friends and talk normal, normal things. And because the computer was of the father, it was limited. They couldn't stay online all day long chatting with these online line friends so they kept on doing like that chatting with people just you know joking <laughs> and then 2012 came started smartphones <laughs> so when smartphones came brought facebook brought whatsapp brought lots lots of things and that is when she discovered about online dating apps but when she discovered about online dating apps knew that in order to join online dating apps you have to pay and she wasn't ready to pay because she was not in a position to pay for a dating app so she did not join online dating apps 
2012 waited till 2014 when she found out or when she discovered a christian dating app which was a hundred percent free then joined and started her online dating journey she was so happy to find out about that christian dating app because she is a christian wanted a guy who is christian loves praying she tells us ministry is her everyday life so she stayed in that dating app for one year <laughs> without finding anyone then after one year got a message from this american guy this guy was a christian so they shared the same beliefs and after chatting for a while this guy asked masha out because the guy seemed very nice masha accepted to be his girlfriend and they started their long distance relationship so guys they started their long distance relationship and sometimes as a couple as a christian couple they could have some prayer moments they could talk about the word of god but that was it this guy did not quote her anymore it was like nothing was there at all all and Marsha tells us if i am in a relationship with you i should feel loved i should feel cared i should feel the affection i should feel the butterflies in the stomach you know that excitement that you get when you are chatting with someone that you love you feel him so so strongly but she did not feel that at all because the guy never made her feel that way guys if you have been on online dating apps for so long you will understand Masha tells us despite feeling this guy they were connected only by the word of god she still stayed with this guy because in her mind was like at least i found someone <laughs> this is what happens when you stay on online dating apps for so long and then you get a little attention from a guy then you'll be like at least i have someone to give me attention but guys i've been singing and singing do not settle for less if the guy doesn't make you happy if he is not what you want in life you don't see a husband material in him end it as early as possible but too bad Masha stayed so beautiful friends they kept on talking chatting no video call making once in a month and then came a time where this guy kept quiet for the whole week Masha was very very worried was like what happened then after a week this guy returned then he was like i was very very sick Masha told him why can't you go to the hospital and tells us in her fantasy world <laughs> thought had found the one so she still stayed with this guy and still believed maybe the guy was sick then came another problem whereby Masha asked this guy have you talked to your parents about me that you are dating a black woman and this guy could be like ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, you, you know when they don't know what to tell you so sometimes he could avoid that topic meaning he wasn't ready to tell the parents that he is dating Masha but Masha kept on holding on to that relationship so time passed and then this guy disappeared again I told you if a guy disappears on you without an important reason a reason that is going to convince you and be like okay <laughs> I forgive you he will disappear again so this guy disappeared again on Masha and Masha was worried again <laughs> because he wasn't available on whatsapp she couldn't find this guy anywhere so what she decided to do decided to call a normal call from Tanzania to America those us it was very very expensive but she had to do it so called the guy but he did not Peak. and after the call ended this guy called Masha was so furious was like why did you call me you know complaining why Masha had to call and told Masha I wasn't sick I was praying I wanted a break I wanted a me time oh my god Masha tells us she had never seen that guy angry the way he was angry when she called him 
So guys, after that incident, the guy kept on changing. He would get angry on everything. And when Marsha saw that, was like, you know what? I can't take it anymore. Let us end this relationship. So Marsha moved out of that relationship very sad. So when she ended that relationship, you know, you get frustrated and disappointed about the dating apps. Most of the times, guys, we give dating apps fault. <laughs> but actually it's not the dating app it's the person that you met <laughs> that is a problem so she was like i am going to log out of all these dating apps and at that time she had joined not only that christian dating app came to discover other dating apps was using afro introductions afro romance christian dating app for free that is where she found the guy and e harmony so she logged out of all those dating apps but never deleted them took a break so after being angry about dating apps was like okay now i am going back <laughs> to date my fellow black men As she was dating that guy was at the university on her third year and also found an internship job that she could go to college at night and then in the morning could go to work so the job that she was doing involved lots of white men so she came to interact with white people got to know their culture got to know how they think got to know how they do things even found lots of white girlfriends so guys Masha continued with her everyday life going to college going to work and was dating that tanzanian guy so one day was in one of social media platforms <laughs> i'm gonna tell you that platform before we end this video that is where Masha found the one that american guy his name is brandon so she was on that social media platform and then was like let me go through those accounts that talks about interracial relationships Masha was interested in interracial dating so what she could do she could go through an account and then read everything if she understands follows so she kept on doing like that and came across this account i was talking about interracial dating talking about relationships and above all talking about god so she was so so happy and was like at least i found an account that talks about god an account that talks of reality that tells me this is white this is black so she decided to write a message to that account and i was like thank you so much for writing encouraging words they have really encouraged me so so much but also thank you for involving god in this because in our today's lives these days people if they date in a long distance relationship they don't involve god but you involving god it really means a lot you are doing a great job and the reason why Masha wrote a message to that account tells us she was doing a business before so she knew the importance of encouraging someone you're doing something and you're getting feedback it really helps it pushes you to go forward and it's true guys and you guys that have been sending me dms or writing in the comment section telling me bella you are doing a great job i always get encouraged and that is why i'm always showing up <laughs> because i get energy from you guys that give me the feedback so that is why mashra decided to write to that account and yes she loved the account too so after sending the message they sent her an automated message saying thank you so much we will get back to you soon so friends let's go back to russia's life on online dating apps remember did not delete the dating apps but took a break so Marsha tells us going through online dating apps safety so that it was very very important someone knows her whereabouts because she could meet very very weird people so she was like it's better i talk to only one person 
in our family so one time moved from dodoma to arusha where her family is for visits so as she was there started making stories with her dad and then you know it just came like that told the dad you know what dad i am doing online dating the dad stayed quiet a bit and was like oh really but i am not surprised you youth always you're on your phone so where else do you think you'll meet each other <laughs> if it is not through online dating? So go on. <laughs> Marsha was so, so happy that the dad supported her. But the dad did not share this news to the mother. Because the mother, as I talked to Marsha, she is those mothers that are old fashioned, you know, they cannot accept something like that <laughs> it was going to be a very very big fight between Masha and the mother so it remained as daddy and daughter little secret <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is so good to have a father who really understands you <laughs> and supports you so guys when Masha shared that little secret with the dad the dad kept on asking her any luck my daughter, any luck? Masha would be like, dad, nothing. So it reached a point, Masha's dad started praying about it. Oh, this is so good. Bless you, dad. <laughs> so guys, life kept on. And then that account, if you remember it, that social media account started checking on Masha every day, asking her, how are you doing? So they started chatting. And at some point, that account started asking Masha, you look very down. What is wrong? Then Masha was like, yes, you know, I'm so interested in interaction ratio dating i've tried but it did not work so she could talk to this account in a girlish way thinking that that account the admin or whoever was managing that account was a woman so she was talking womanish <laughs> So it kept on like that, checking on her, encouraging her. And then one day received a message from that account telling her, can we talk outside this account? Then Marsha was like, mm, let me think about it. So after a week, she responded and was like, okay, let us chat outside that account. Then that account was like, okay, I am going to send you a request right now. So guys, Masha was expecting to get a request from a woman because <laughs> he knew whoever was chatting with her was a woman, maybe married or single, but could really, really understand what Masha was going through. So she received a request from Facebook, received a request on Instagram. To her surprise, saw the profile of those requests there was a photo of a little boy so she was really confused and then that account wrote to her i was like did you see my request Marshall was like was it you with a little boy's face then he was like yes it's me when i was little that is when Marshall was like what so all this while i've been chatting to a man <laughs> So accepted a request and from there, they started chatting privately. So they started chatting and the way they could chat, it was only a friendship chat. They were only friends. Masha could call Brandon brother and Brandon could call Masha sister. So it was sister Masha, brother Brandon, you know, like that. Masha never told the dad because for her, they were only friends, nothing like a relationship. So in their friendship, they could share everything about each other, what is going on in their relationships. And Masha tells us both of them were in situationships kind of a relationship <laughs> with the people they were dating at that time so they could keep on encouraging each other in all situations that they were going through so they really became besties and guys to make everything clear that kenyan lady that was dating brandon they were in a long distance relationship so it's not that brandon was married to this girl or anything no they had even never met 
guys, we have a little Afro cinema. <laughs> One day, Masha went on a date, dinner date, with a Tanzanian guy, and while they were eating, Masha powered water on her top accidentally. Oh my goodness. The guy stood and started insulting Masha. In Swahili, he was like, Una <laughs> shouted at her that everyone in that restaurant started looking at Masha. But something that is so annoying, Masha was the one paying for that bill. That guy was using Masha for money. He could ask her money. In fact, the little salary that Masha could get could spend it on a boyfriend. <laughs> And that is why she said she was in a situation kind of a relationship. <laughs> so the guy shouted and stood left Masha at that restaurant. When Masha returned home, talked to Brandon and told him everything that happened at the restaurant. She was so, so sad about it. Brandon was like, oh, I am so sorry. How could he treat you like that? But maybe let us give him time. Maybe he was so angry. Maybe he's short tempered, you know, something like that. So it ended and that night passed. On Brandon's side, Brandon also started telling Masha about relationship with a Kenyan lady. A Kenyan lady also was using to get some money from him. So it was also a situation because that lady could also disappear for a month and be like, I was praying. I went to the mountains to pray. <laughs> But the real, real truth eventually came out that lady wasn't even single like she claimed to be. And on Marshall's side, on her relationship, eventually things continued going bad, 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 bad with a Tanzanian guy. And Marsha decided to end the relationship with a Tanzanian guy, but never told Brandon about it. Though they were good, good friends. <laughs> Because maybe she thought Brandon could encourage her to keep on trying or waiting for that guy. <laughs> that is why she never shared that with Brandon. But they kept on talking as friends. So everything was going good between Marsha and Brandon as friends. Then Marsha couldn't talk anymore about her relationship problems. <laughs> started talking more about her life problems, wasn't worried anymore about her relationship. And Marsha tells us at that time, she started being in a financial crisis because the job that she was doing, it was only internship and it wasn't paying her that much. Used to stay with her sister. The rent was like 150 euros and Marsha's salary was 50 euros. So paying for a rent, though they were dividing it with the sister was a struggle for Marsha because she found herself not even eating well because she has to save that money to pay for the rent. So she was like, I'm spending lots of money to buy bundles, to buy vouchers. You know, if you're in Tanzania, you understand. Not all people have got Wi-Fi. People buy vouchers. You buy a voucher, scratch it, enter some number, then you have airtime <laughs> to talk, to communicate, you know, to chat. Yeah. So it was like, I'm spending a lot on these vouchers and I have got lots of problems. I have to pay my own bills and I am a grown up. I can say that I am going back to my father's house. I have to be responsible. So what came into her mind was just to shut down the phone and sell it so that she can pay for the rent. And it's very, very true. I can relate. At the time when I was on online dating apps, I told you at some point, I tried online dating apps before finding my husband. So I could use lots of vouchers. I understand you guys that are on online dating apps. You have to put vouchers to communicate to these guys to stay online. You have to put vouchers to watch my videos. <laughs> That's why I always thank you so, so much. Sometimes it's not easy. So Masha had to talk to Brandon. You know what, Brandon? Due to my situation, I have to sell my phone because I'm using lots of vouchers to communicate and I have some more important things 
to do brandon wasn't happy because of course meaning her switching off the phone and sell it it was going to be difficult for them to communicate so asked Marsha, how are we going to communicate because it is so easy right now we are talking on whatsapp so if you sell your phone how are we going to communicate i promise you i'm going to be communicating to you on facebook using my laptop i'm not going to disappear on you trust me and told her i am going to pray for you so Marsha had to shut down her phone and then put it on sale she tells us her phone was samsung s2 very hot cake at that time and it was very very new so when she put it on market was so sure is going to find someone to buy the phone but unfortunately after searching for someone to buy for it for days never got someone to buy that phone so guys after not getting anyone to buy the phone Marsha had to put the sim card again communicate to brandon tell him that i did not get anyone to buy the phone brandon was so so happy to hear again from Marsha told her that i missed you so much these days that i did not communicate to you i really felt very very empty in my heart so asked Marsha, how can I help you? Marsha was like, oh my God, I'm so, so bad at asking help, even if I'm in need of help. And most men that I have dated made me pay for everything. I'm not used for someone to pay things for me. <laughs> so Brandon was like, okay, I have an idea. You look for rent and I'm going to be sending you money by food and your transport to go to work. When Marsha heard that, it was like, okay, that is a very great idea. Thank you so much, Brandon. Remember, Brandon did all that. They are still friends, not in a relationship or anything. This guy is really, really good. And yes, Brandon started sending money to Marsha like he promised to buy food and for her transport. Everything was fine and Marsha tells us, could make sure she gets the receipts of everything that she buys, sends the receipts, show him this is how I spent the money. No, show the evidence. And it's not that Brandon wanted to see the evidence, but Marsha felt like it's so good to be transparent. If someone is sending you money, at least show him that yes, this is how I spent the money. This created a lot of trust between Marsha and Brandon. So guys, they kept on being good friends and that same same year, 2019, too bad, Brandon lost the brother. May his soul rest in peace, amen. So that period when Brandon lost the brother, Marsha was there with him. Brandon appreciated very, very much, was like, I've never been cared for like the way you care for me. You are far, far away from me, but you were there for me in this difficult time. Marsha was like, that is what friends are for. So after that, they kept on communicating, but Marsha tells us calling each other brother, sister, started reducing little by little. And then one time, Brandon was like, you know what, Marsha, all this while I've been looking for someone and you have been there. Marsha, you are the one. Let us start dating. Marsha laughed so hard and was like, give me some time to think about it. So she thought about it for a week, but in her heart was very, very sure that wanted to date Brandon because she knew Brandon already you know someone taking care of you showing responsibility towards you and you are not even in a relationship that shows a good man so they started dating and Marsha tells us within two or three weeks Brandon started talking about getting married even started praying about marriage it could be like marriage 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 so because Marsha was very happy of what was going on decided to share the news with her sister tell her that i'm chatting with an american guy his name is brandon and he's talking about marriage i think in december that was 2019 december i need to talk to dad about him so the sister was so happy very very excited 
couldn't wait, shared the news with Masha's dad without Masha knowing. So when December came, Masha went to talk to the dad about Brandon. The dad laughed and was like, I knew you were dating someone. The dad was so, so happy, received Brandon even without knowing him. Never judged Brandon. Masha tells us his spirit bonded with Brandon. And after Masha sharing the news to the dad, that is when the news had to go to Masha's mother. But Masha's mother never knew that Brandon was a white guy. It's only Masha and the sister that knew Brandon was a white guy. So after Brandon knowing that Masha's dad knows about him, requested for his phone number, requested the number of Masha's sister, requested the number of Masha's mother. And also Brandon did the same, shared the phone number of the mother, of the sister and of the father. So their relationship kept on growing. Masha tells us was at peace because for her, she knows peace in a relationship. And guys, I am telling you, if you're dating someone, you feel yourself around him, you feel safe with him, you feel peace with him. You know that he is the one and that relationship is gonna work out. So Masha felt at peace with Brandon. They started sharing each other important, important documents, you know, to create more trust. So some of the documents that Masha sent to Brandon was her certificates of the university to show that, hey, I went to school, was the passport, but tells you that whenever you share your important information with a guy online, no matter how much you love him, be very careful about the numbers. Be very careful about it. You can show the name, but the numbers never, never, ever. Guys, Masha sharing this important information showed Brandon, this is me. I am real. I'm a real person. I went to school. This is my passport. And this helped so, so much in their relationship. So guys, let us take tips here. So Masha tells us 2020 January, things got awkwardly serious because Brandon wrote a very well-mannered message to Masha's dad. I am Brandon. I live in America. I'm writing this message to let you know that I'm dating your daughter and I am asking a hand in marriage to marry your daughter. Masha's dad was like, if my daughter loves you, if you guys love each other, I have nothing to say because in my house, I let my daughter choose. And if you guys involve God in everything, then I am good. So after Brandon talking to Masha's dad also asked for the process and Masha's dad asked, how do you want to do it? Then Brandon was like, I want to follow your culture. You know, the traditional way. So they told him about the bride price and Brandon was okay to pay the bride price. Then Marsha's dad told him, Brandon, you can come with that bride price when you come to Tanzania, don't worry. But Brandon was like, no, I want to send that bride price to show you that I am serious with your daughter. I really want to marry her. So Masha's dad was like, who trusts people that he has never met with all that money? What if all of us, we are frauds? <laughs> but Brandon was like, I am going to send that money for the bride price before I come to show my seriousness. But on the other side, or on Brandon's side, he did that because he really loved Masha and did not want to lose her for another man. He was doing all that to take her because he was so, so scared. Someone else might come and take Masha from him. He told Masha, we don't see good women every day. So I risked to send that money and even if you guys were frauds, I could have told myself at least I tried to get a good woman. Another thing that Marsha tells us is that due to the way Marsha could behave with Brandon's money, show him evidence, you send me money for food, I have bought food, these are the receipts, gave Brandon lots of trust, never thought that they could be a family of frauds 
because she was very very honest with Brandon's money. So we have another tip here guys. If you're chatting with a guy on online dating apps, try your best to create enough trust. Don't be just there. You want to go out and have fun. Then you call your online boyfriend and be like, I am sick. Send me money. He sends you money. You go to enjoy life, not to the hospital. <laughs> and if this guy asks you to confirm if really you were in the hospital, you start a fight. That guy will never trust you. So please, let's be honest, for God's sake. Guys, success stories don't just happen. You have to put efforts. And that is why I always take my time to tell you things into details so that you can learn. So guys, Brandon sent the money for the bride price. The family received it. They were very, very happy took a photo that they have received it and then Masha's dad told Masha you are now someone's wife to be so after sending the bride price they set the date for the wedding and it was wedding preparations but guys we have a pro cinema <laughs> begins so guys on Brandon's side the family knew that Brandon was dating someone from Africa but they didn't know that Brandon was planning a wedding in Africa. The reason why Brandon never talked to the parents about getting married to Marsha is because of all that happens. These honest people from other parts of the world, they date Americans and then when they reach in America, they dump those guys and be on their own, start their own life. Like they use them for green card. I hope you guys understand. So due to that, Brandon was so, so scared. If I tell my parents that I'm going to marry Masha, cause they were going to be thinking, maybe Masha wants to use Brandon to go to America. So that is why he never mentioned anything like that. He only told the parents that he is going to Africa for tourism <laughs> on a vacation and brandon guys was very very open to Masha. told her everything that i did not tell my parents about it yes they fought Masha wasn't happy at all but again what can she do <laughs> so had to talk to the parents and the parents were like okay we understand him so the day for brandon to travel go to tanzania came and he was at the airport called Masha. he started panicking he was like i don't know if i should do this give me some time to think about it if i keep on feeling peace then i'm gonna come so he hang up on Masha. Masha too started panicking very very worried in tanzania everything was ready prepared everything paid for the wedding day and at that time Masha tells us started thinking a lot cause used to hear people talking behind her back be like we haven't seen this man around what if he doesn't come so they knew he wasn't coming from Tanzania and maybe some people are praying that Brandon doesn't appear so that Masha can be a laughing stock but Masha prayed and was like, God, I put everything into your hands. Let Brandon come. And after some hours, Brandon called, was like, I talked to God. I feel peace. Right now, I am in Ethiopia on my way. She was so, so happy and told Brandon, I'm not going to dump you. I'm not going to use you. And I will be at the airport waiting for you. So she was like, I am going to arrive early at the airport because I don't want Brandon to even feel that I am not coming. So guys, let me go a little bit back about Brandon not telling the parents. I've been telling you all the time, a guy should introduce you to the parents. But in that kind of a situation, you have to be wise. We see that Brandon went against the family and decided to come to Tanzania to marry Masha. That showed love, that showed responsibility, that showed maturity. And all these qualities, they are of a good man, a husband material, a man who will stand by your side if anything happens. So friends, eventually Brandon arrived in Tanzania 
Masha was at the airport waiting for him when she saw him at first Afrosino. <laughs> So, oh my god, this girl is so so transparent. I really love her because of the way she explained everything to us. So, Marsha tells us when she saw him at first, she knew that Brandon had told her that he has got a back issues, but Brandon never told her that when he sits for so long, then when he stands up and starts walking, he limps. So when she saw him, saw Brandon limping and then started remembering those people who were talking behind her back, <laughs> they could also say that what if he comes and he is disabled? This is very, very bad. I told you guys, kabla hujafa, hujaumbika. If you are still alive, god is still creating you so anything can happen in your life never laugh at anyone who is disabled because we don't know our tomorrow but people could be like what if he comes and he is disabled so when Masha saw him limping walking and limping was like mm, okay but this is what i want it is not all about looks it's all about how he makes me feel. Wow, I really love this woman to be that intelligent. So she was like, I'm gonna love him the way he is. He is mine, this is my choice. And on Brandon's side, <laughs> when he saw Masha, yes, they used to talk on a video call. <laughs> so when he saw, I was like, okay, so she is an average woman. You know, I told you she's not slim. <laughs> she's there, average. But he was so, so happy, impressed of what he was seeing. He was like, yes, I made a good deal. <laughs> so they hugged. They were very, very happy to meet each other finally. <laughs> so guys, I know always when you hear the airports, you are like, how about the goodies? <laughs> Not yet, guys. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so the plans were Brandon wasn't going to stay in a hotel. And this was Marsha's dad's idea. He said, you can't let someone who has never been in Tanzania stay in the hotel alone. So they arranged that Brandon is going to stay at Marsha's sister's house. And then Marsha wants to stay at her parents' house. And that is how it happened. But Marsha's friends offered to be Brandon's friend so they could keep him company, they could play lots of games, you know, so that he doesn't get bored. Because he came a month before the wedding. So sometimes Marsha's sister could come to pick her from the parents' house, go meet Brandon, hang out, go for dates, you know, enjoy life, and she says, that little time <laughs> that they had together, they could kiss. They kissed a lot, but goodies, they decided to wait till the wedding day. So while Brandon was still waiting for the wedding day, that day went to Marsha's parents' house. And then when he arrived, came Marsha's little nephew had some flowers. So brought flowers for Marsha and Marsha was like, wow, hugged the kid and took the flowers. So when she took the flowers and then stood up, phoned Brandon on his knee, popped the question in front of the parents. <laughs> Marsha, will you marry me? And she said yes, was so, so happy about the surprise. <laughs> Everything was good, good, good. So guys, parties started. I told you in Tanzania, we have kitchen party. So they did a kitchen party for her. They did a send off party for her and a surprise bridal shower. It was so, so beautiful. And then the wedding day, dee -dee 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 -dee, wedding bells. <laughs> the wedding day came. It was such a beautiful day. Marsha's dad walked her to the aisle. You can see the photo. Here, it's such a beautiful photo. Everything was so, so good at the wedding. They wedded. I'm going to show all the photos 
of their wedding it was really really beautiful she looked so gorgeous even brandon looked very very good <laughs> so after you went of course you have to go for a wedding party so they went for a party and marsha tells us they did not want to make that party long because they had their own plans about the goodies <laughs> couldn't wait to enjoy the goodies so they wanted the party to be short so the party was good they enjoyed and then went to the hotel so the hotel that they had booked for the honeymoon was a bit far and the party ended at night so they decided to rest for that one night in one of the normal hotel resident now comes the goodies part <laughs> those as when they entered into that hotel, the only thing they did was to shower, looked at each other, and they were like, we can't wait for the main hotel. <laughs> Let's have the goodies. <laughs> so tells us they had the goodies. They enjoyed the goodies very, very well. <laughs> so, so much, and it was good. It was so fun. <laughs> Then the next morning came this fancy car, took them to their honeymoon destination. So after arriving at the honeymoon destination, tells us more goodies, because that hotel never had television, <laughs> which were going to distract them with the TV shows, and never had phones, so no one was to call them to distract them. It was goodies, 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 goodies. <laughs> they really enjoyed very very much in their honeymoon <laughs> so after honeymoon brandon had to return to america and left marsha in tanzania start her visa process the visa process took them one year she tells us it wasn't easy at all but marsha has some advice for you if you want to immigrate to america so her advice number one to someone who wants to immigrate to america and you're going for a visa interview is be real be honest number two pictures are so so important so when your partner comes or when your husband comes make sure you take enough photos as evidence her advice number three is that communicate to your partner make sure you know your partner very very well and know what your partner wrote in those papers because you go to a visa interview they ask you something about your partner you don't know or you answer wrongly you are finished <laughs> her other advice concerning the visa interview she tells you every visa interview is different so please research so after waiting for her visa for that one year her visa came out she got her visa and then brandon went to tanzania to take her oh my god brandon loves marsha very very much marsha tells us the family did like a farewell party for them and then left together came to america i'm going to put a short clip here of them leaving to tanzania at the airport going to america so they left to tanzania went to america they've been married for three years happily married congratulations marsha and brandon i wish you all the best in your marriage let's congratulate them guys some exciting news is that marsha promised us to come with a part two of her life in america we have some good news coming for you so just stick here i know right now you're like bella you want to forget to tell us where they met <laughs> they met on facebook and it was a facebook page managed by brandon i'm gonna share the name of that facebook page so that you can follow them guys have the word of god get encouraged you know you who are interested in interracial dating also this couple has got an instagram account so i'm also going to be sharing their instagram account here or here so that you can follow them and show them love so quickly quickly to marshall's advice to all ladies that are online dating apps searching or you are chatting with someone already you are in a relationship her advice number one is please please 
try to understand what you're getting yourself into you are chatting with a guy everything is good you are dating get to research about his culture traditions and everything because we are coming from different culture and traditions so it is good for you to know advice number two be authentic be honest it's very very important in your relationship number three if god blesses you with a man with wealth please please do not lose your brain go with your brain respect him and also be very careful of what you share on social media have dignity respect your culture respect your tradition if you're doing something keep doing it if you're working keep working don't leave your job just because you are dating someone <laughs> <laughs> keep doing what you used to do before advice number four paying for a dating app doesn't mean you will find someone because even Masha at some point she paid for a dating app tells us she paid like for five months but never found anyone so be open-minded keep praying to God because you can find a man anywhere it might be on Facebook it might be on Instagram it might be maybe at the cafe it's only God who knows so keep praying to him so that he brings the right man in your life it doesn't matter where that man will come from advice number five which is the last one do all for love and be transparent so yes. my lovely friends thank you so much for watching this video till now i really appreciate you much god bless you please if you have liked this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends family everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something watch my other videos too they are super good comment below what you think about this beautiful love story i would like to know until next time i love you so much guys you're always here in my heart ciao ciao Mwah.